hi, Christine. Thank you for taking the time to meet with me online. Please uh, just give me a you know, brief introduction of yourself, name, position, company. Okay. I'm Christine Wong. I'm the Managing Director of King Pepper Products Limited, located in Falmouth, Jamaica. And uh, we are the manufacturers of the Eaton's line of products, which includes Jamaican jerk seasonings, um, hot pepper sauces, scotch bonnet sauces, jams, and chutneys. And we've been around since 1985. Cool. And just to let everyone know that you guys are um, a client of Solar Buds. So we've, we've worked together for the last four years, since 2017, um, which is why you're one on the top of my list to do my first kind of interview like this with someone. Um, because, you know, I know the inner workings kind of of your business and we've, we've, we've provided you with an energy solution. Um, so really this discussion is just, I'm just getting, you know, in the minds of business people who may also be Solar Buzz clients and just how they're dealing with this new reality that we're living in with the COVID situation um, yeah. and what, what you guys are doing to become more resilient. Um, I know we will also discuss towards the end how, how renewable energy has helped the business over the years and, you know, how it's benefiting now with maybe you're ramping up or you had to ramp down production. I'm not sure, but we can discuss it. Um, and, you know, basically I'm really doing these interviews because I just had a, ba a baby and it was, a, it was one of the ways I could get my wife to give me some spare time and not have to uh, <laughs> your, your excuse from changing yeah, diapers, I, I, was able, right? I was able to stick everyone upstairs and go into this <laughs> high level, deep soundproof um, <laughs> yeah, meeting on, um, uh, congrats. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you guys at, at, um, King Pepper, um, is it true that you are actually working on a cure for COVID? <laughs> I'm kidding. We have a cure. We have a vaccine here and it is a hundred percent scotch bonnet pepper. <laughs> okay. Great, great. Um, so you, I know you guys do, uh, you have global distribution, right? So you're, where, where, where are you distributing to? Yeah. Okay. So our business is about 85% exports right now um, versus local sales. And our overseas markets include the UK, uh, the USA, Canada, Grand Cayman and Barbados. Um, for a private label customer, uh, we have product going as far as Japan, but that's not under our brand. That's a private label. Right. But yes, we export internationally. So how has the whole situation affected the, the export of the products? I mean, what, what have you guys had to deal with? There's definitely been a decrease of sales. Um, one particular customer, not international, local, but my local distributor actually canceled all outstanding orders um, in early March when we had our first case um, announced in Jamaica. So it has been... And then export orders are down in the region of 50, 60 percent. Um, so it's been it's been tough times and it's it's been definitely a learning experience. And um, we are just trying to sustain the business that we have, satisfy the customers as quickly as we can um, for the orders that are still coming in, which I have to you know, be very grateful for. We do still have some distributors overseas still placing orders. In particular, they say their online sales are doing very well. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to satisfy those orders as quickly as possible. But, but you're overall... Able to, you're able to get them out, right? You're able to export? Yeah, we're not having a problem at all getting them out. And uh, transportation on the roads, we, um, we equip our driver and delivery people with letters because it's outside of curfew hours many times so as we're in Trelawney, we have to get the, the truck into Kingston. Um, we, we haven't encountered any, any issues that way with people have been very facilitating. Right. How, how is it, I know you guys deal with obviously a lot of farmers, right? How is yes. it affecting the, with the local farmers and who you guys, you know, it's, it's to tough when the crisis hit, um, our warehouse was full because we were having a fairly good um, season in terms of inflows of pepper and scallion. Um, and so with an immediate drop in about, of about 60% of sales, you find yourself with a warehouse full of goods, production is down, cash flow is tied up in your inventory. Um, we had to make a tough decision. So we paused inflows of red pepper 
and scallion very reluctantly mm -hmm. um, because we know the effects that that will then cause in the field with the farmers losing um, crops if they don't find another outlet. And then with the hotels closed, um, just compounded the situation for the farmers. Right. Um, fortunately, we're reopening purchases of scallion um, next week. Um, so we took about a four week break um, and pepper we hope to resume in June. Right. So we are using up some stocks. We're trying to collect um, very aggressively on outstanding invoices so that we can in turn have the cash flow to resume purchases and get some money to the farmers, some support to the farmers. Right. I would think that because, you know, everyone is going to the grocery store and buying so much more, have you guys actually, so you didn't see any spikes in that region of people buying more of your products because they're trying to stock up or was it just not, seasoning is just not on like what people are trying to get? I have not yet seen an overall spike. I don't know if that might be coming down the road. I did get a rush order um, from my distributor in the UK, a little bit out of the blue. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure what's happening in the markets there. I'll have to give them a call. Um, so we're going to turn that around quickly. But locally, I have not seen a spike um, in local sales. My overseas distributors, it's not enough to say that they're placing additional orders with me. I haven't seen that yet, with the exception of that one out of the UK. So, with the, the factory there on the on the on when it was going in full, how many people do you guys have? in like on staff at the factory so in the summer which is generally our peak season because that's the time when um our overseas markets are doing a lot of barbecuing and grilling outside um and also it's mango season in jamaica so that's when we buy up all our mangoes and produce our mango chutney and mango jam right. um so summer tends to be really busy so usually in the summer months i'm employing up to 100 people Right. Um, no, I'm down to about 36, unfortunately. Um, but my priority is supporting my staff, ensuring their safety, and uh, just trying to keep alive, you know, here so that, you know, everybody can have a little bread on their table. That's, that's really my priority right now. Right. Um, so the, the, did you guys have to do any work from home? I know your father, who founded the company, right, Dudley? Um, yes. Very cool guy. Are you guys all, did you, was there self-isolating at any point? Were you having to, you know, the factory just down for a few days, a week or two, or what was that like? I mean, okay, at no point were we down, thank goodness. My dad, yes, at the age of 82, um, as soon as the first case was announced in Jamaica, he made the decision, or we made this decision as a family, that he would work from home. Um, so he's been isolating since about March 10th. Um, just because we feel he's at a higher risk, a little bit of a heart condition and his age, we, we want to limit his exposure. Um, the factory was not closed at any time. And because we are a manufacturer, um, we are unable to work from home. We all kind of need to be here. Um, even the lab people have to be on site to do the testing and so forth. So we all are physically here at the factory. We're running a four day work week now. Um, we hope to get back to a, a full-time work week uh, soon. If, if we're seeing, if some trends that we're seeing continue, maybe in June we can resume full-time production. Right. Um, so, and then staff, every, does, does everyone just have to wear protective gear coming in? Is that how? Yeah, so we, we did a few measures with regards to staff. Um, even before the COVID-19 was confirmed in Jamaica, we had been holding um, sensitization sessions with our staff. Um, just based on the information that we had um, a lot originating out of China initially and how they uh, kind of coped with, with the virus there. So we shared what information we had with our staff even before coronavirus was confirmed in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, once it was confirmed, I believe we've held three additional sessions um, just reinforcing uh, the hand washing the social distancing and the protective gear. We have purchased masks for our staff to wear, not just at work, but for them to take home as well and, and in their public transportation. Um, my production manager, Dwight, he has revised our entire production line um, to see how best we can space out staff. Um, giving, we're, we're, a small, um, we're a small factory, a small space. 
um, but he's kind of positioned people uh, as best as possible to give them uh, maximum social distancing between them, even while products are on the line um, coming off. Um, we have our guard at the gate uh, doing pre-screening of everybody coming in. Have they been exposed to anybody with the virus? Have they been quarantined at any time? She's doing temperature checks and she's also doing uh, sanitizer for everybody coming on the compound. We also have a rule for everybody to wear masks when they come on the compound. Um, we also have, re go ahead. Well, we've, um, we've the lunch area, we have put markers on the benches to show the distance that people should be um, spread out during, uh, during the lunch hour. And we've also reduced the number of people permitted in the office and the lab, small areas. Um, so only one customer in the office at any given time and so forth. So, um, so far, everybody has maintained their health mm -hmm. and um, we hope for that to continue. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's impressive because even from what I'm hearing, a lot of businesses in uh, Kingston and other parts of, uh, of the island, a lot of, a lot of places aren't taking it as definitely not as serious as you are. I mean, temperature effects is a, is a, is a pretty big step to be doing. Yeah, and then those thermometers are not cheap, you know, but we've all had to adjust to the new normal and being a manufacturing facility, we don't have the option of working from home. So yeah. if we have an outbreak here, that's it. You know, that's it for a few weeks. We're all down. So that's really what we're trying to avoid. And tell people how close you are to the to the cruise ship port. Okay. We are about two miles from the cruise ship port in Falmouth, which Falmouth is like a ghost town now. Yeah, yeah. there's very so, little activity. Were you nervous at the time that when the cruise ships were still coming and um, this outbreak was, was going? Were, 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 you, were you nervous being so close to them? We were concerned and we also have a kiosk down there with um, mm -hmm. staff by one person and we were very concerned for her. So Wait, very what, early what, on. Who has that suit? <laughs> Not quite, but very, very early on, she had her sanitizer and her mask. And, you know, after every interaction, she, she was sanitizing the place and so forth. Yeah. It was kind of, kind of nerve wracking there. Yeah. So I guess they're saying that maybe cruises may start back. Did you hear, did you hear, did I hear June or did I, or is it? September? I saw a date of June. I think that's extremely optimistic, but you know, we'll, we'll see. We're taking it one day at a time. Do you see like w w what the government has been coming out and doing um, in your, I mean, are they doing enough down there for, for businesses to help like you guys get back in, in, in full swing? Do you think um, there's more that's needed that you would want to see happening? I mean, w um, what kind of help are you guys needing or wanting or, 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 or you don't need? I'm, I'm very appreciative of what the government is doing um, to assist businesses. Much of their um, programs we don't qualify for. Um, much of their programs was geared toward, uh, toward businesses that are very tourism oriented, the hotels and the tourism providers, mm -hmm. um, and also for, for smaller businesses than ours. So we don't qualify, but that doesn't say that I'm not um, I'm not aligned with their efforts and, and giving first priority to those businesses who are really at a complete standstill. Fortunately, we have some level of business going on. Um, one area that I did benefit from is that I am a client of the Factories Corporation of Jamaica, which is a government owned entity. Um, we lease a warehouse space from them, which is next door to our main facility. And, um, they had uh, come out with, uh, I don't know if it was an offer, but some type of an email survey um, just for us to kind of share whatever hardship that, that we were experiencing. So I jumped on that right away and I, I explained to them that business was down and, you know, my priority is really um, staff and farmer support right now. I think um, paying rent to a government facility wasn't as high on my list. And fortunately, they agreed to a moratorium. So they're taking it on a month by month. So I did get a moratorium for April and um, they, I guess we'll assess me uh, further down in the month. Yeah. But I'm very, I'm very grateful for whatever assistance can come my way. My bankers also, I don't know how much you 
you know, but Scotia came out immediately um, with a customer assistance program, which I spoke to my bank manager about. Um, so loans that we had with them, business loans for the solar project, um, you know, real estate loans and so forth. They've agreed to a three month uh, moratorium on principal payments. Right. So all, all of that adds up and we're very, very appreciative for any assistance or concessions that our, our bankers or the government can extend to us. Yeah, I think it's important for especially um, smaller businesses, uh, entrepreneurs who may watch this and, and, and see that, um, you know, it's important to go and speak to your banks, your financial institutions and ask for help because for sure. And we have to be proactive. Yeah, you have to be proactive. And I've encouraged my staff for those of them because their um, their wages or salaries are down now a bit too, because we're down to four days a week. Um, mm -hmm. And immediately I said to them, whoever needs a letter from me to um, to indicate your reduction in wages and salary, um, to extend whatever assistance your uh, loan providers can to you, I'm happy to do so. And um, about 20 staff members have taken me up on it so far and um, have, have gained favorable feedback from entities like courts and microfinance firms that they may have had small loans with. Yeah. So, um, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's heartening. Yeah. The, the, I've been watching because I'm, you know, we're all stuck at home so much. I, I've never watched so much webinars in my life. And I think that's why I'm yeah. even doing this interview because I'm just inundated with webinar every day, but the PSOJ yeah. is doing some pretty good webinars on advising, small businesses on how to approach financial institutions and, and things like that. So I think a lot of people and business owners who um, would like to see a path on how to do that, to check out the PSOJ's Facebook page. It's been pretty interesting. Yeah, I do get, I do get alerts from them. Yeah. You are, uh, you're a director of the JMEA, right? Jamaica. I am a director of the JMEA and yeah. I feel if I could share, I feel that our association has been extremely vocal and uh, and uh, proactive in um, in assisting the government to to take the measures that they have, right. um, recommending certain things, um, ensuring that manufacturers are classified as an essential service. That was a very big deal because if under the Disaster Act we weren't classified as such. Um, there could be a shortage in, in things like food production, protective um, sanitizers and stuff like that. So um, the JMEA has been very, very active during this COVID pandemic. And just for people who don't know, it's the Jamaica Manufacturers and Export, Exporters Association. Correct. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to keep in place? Have you, what have you learned that's going to be like, okay, we're going to actually do this now more efficiently because we've had to, we've had to be put through, put in this situation are there any things that you've done that you're going to now implement full-time or i mean that's built there's more resiliency in the business yeah um one of the things that really has um been a lesson for me the thing is when you're a small business um but but somewhat successful you're always in growth mode right. so maybe not everybody but we have always been trying to grow whether it be adding to our product line um, becoming more efficient in our manufacturing process, reducing costs um, through our solar project. We're, we're always looking for ways to improve our business or grow our business. And as a result, cash flow is often tight. But because you have ongoing, dependable business, great customers, um, you know, you just keep going because you feel like the resources will always be coming in to continue along that path. I think going forward when this situation settles a bit and we get back on our feet, I'm going to emphasize um, improving my cash position a little bit more um, just to ensure that should something like this happen again, maybe we have three months reserves yeah. to kind of keep things going. Um, that has been a huge lesson for me. Yeah. Um, but I'm also looking at Another thing I want to mention that's a little interesting is that in March, I undertook a social media um, program and I hired an outside, a third party to um, manage my social media for us. So obviously that's an added expense. Mm -hmm. And 
when the coronavirus became um, very present in Jamaica and sales started dropping, I said to myself, man, I wonder if I should, you know, kind of stall the, the social media program because, you know, every dollar kind of counts. And I've decided to keep it going. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a risk. I mean, it's not a huge amount of money, but, you know, in these times, every little bit counts. Um, but I feel like it's, it's working for us. You know, I've, I, I'm seeing um, customer interaction. I'm getting a little bit more um, visibility through Facebook, people inquiring how to become a distributor and so forth. So nothing has really panned out yet, but you never know. Um, where these discussions will lead. So it's a little bit of a risk, but I have found that investment in social media so far is uh, is a, a worthwhile a worthwhile um, expense and sacrifice um, during these times. Yeah, I mean, I, I can tell you, um, Solar Buzz was built on social media. Um, we definitely, when we started uh, in 2011, you know, there were companies who have been doing it for many years ahead of us. But I come from a marketing background, and when I lived in Los Angeles, I did a lot of promotions, worked for a promotions company, and, and I got involved with solar out there. But one of the things I took from you know, doing promotions and marketing is that the collection of data from your clients, as in emails, and then yes. I mean, you know, I, we do a newsletter every week, um, yeah. and then and continuously getting email addresses, and then the, the social media posts as sometimes you know even i get to i'm like i don't even know if it's working or it's worth it but oftentimes i, I got a, someone called me yesterday to set up a zoom meeting based on um a newsletter they want to discuss a project and they quoted one of our uh, the um the headline that we had you know that said she couldn't stop laughing she said social distance yourself from your jps bill i mean yeah. i have gotten so many responses from that one time that we just put out, you know, on a newsletter. It just came up to, you know, I came up with it quickly and put it yeah. out. People like it. They like, and they, they do open it and read it. And so it's, a, it's definitely a good move for you to be continuing in this time. People see you, um, your presence in times of crisis. They, uh, they, they see that you're, you know, that you're resilient and you're strong. So I, I highly advise keeping that social media presence and doing anything you can to stay out there. Uh, yeah, I'm a, full, I'm a full believer now, for sure. Are you doing the social media in the Jamaica market or other markets to where you may want to get people being um, importers of your products, like in the UK or somewhere? Or? Yeah, we are we are open, and of course, you know, Facebook and Instagram are are international. So I'm getting inquiries from all over, as far as Australia. Are you running ads, paid ads, in those markets or stuff like that? We are running paid ads in in those markets. Yeah, yes. That's fine. That's yeah. Just it's our mutual friend, Kevin um, Siaga, who's doing Oh, this, yes, Kevin Siaga, yes, our mutual yeah. friend. <laughs> Kevin's a good guy. He's a very good guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, uh, he, he, does, he does our marketing websites, graphics, and stuff like that. Oh, good. Yeah. So we'll, we'll plug Engage. Yes, plug. Yeah. Shout out to Kevin, Engage yes. Media. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so as you had mentioned, you do have the solar system on the, the factory, right? And Solar Buzz was, was highly involved in that process. Um, I'm going to bring up, I'm just going to put a picture on the screen here. I see it. What are you, you're seeing your building, right, with the graph? I'm seeing my building and I'm seeing a graph with electricity usage right. at the bottom. All right, so I just wanted to kind of, I wanted to show people what the, the building looked like. And this project was kind of unique because if you look over to the right-hand side of the roof, you, you see the older zinc. And then on the, where the solar panels are, you notice that it's really nice and it has a white reflective. Um, yes. Coating. So we did team up with seal spray to put um, the, the, the white coating on the roof the, yes. uh, to help with the, the heat and any leaks because of the, 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 the zinc was a little bit older. We were concerned that there may be some linking, uh, some leaking. Um, yes. The, that cool roof and leak resistant thing, I think has also worked out pretty good in reducing the heat in the factory um uh, along with the with the solar system reducing the overall jps bill for sure and it's extended the life of the roof so yeah yeah for sure yeah win 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 yeah um and you know i can point out basically what we've seen is what, when, once the solar system got up and going we were able to reduce your overall jps bill close to se around 70 percent um Jason, I think we've saved five million dollars over the the three years since we've had our system. 
and for a small business that is a very big deal excellent excellent now with when you see slowdowns right um how, how is this the system also still working in your favor well i have a credit with jps so it's when a, things leading, it's a leading question because <laughs> yeah, you do have that delivery. yes yeah. So when things pick back up, I mean, we have that credit there. So, I mean, it's, it's a no brainer, really. I recommend for every business person in Jamaica to go solar really and truly. Yeah. You, I mean, I have seen months. Um, I, I, I have a, a comparison of two from 2017 to 2020. I took out your, any account information, but can I bring up that bill? Sure. So I want to show people the, the credit that you get from your JPS um, bill. So if you look at the, the top portion, you'll see that this is, that's 2016, when we first met after I was harassing you at the uh, Expo. Manufacturing Expo. <laughs> and, I, and I kept working on it from 2016 until we did the, the, the project in 2017. So that's right. another lesson for anyone uh, watching is that you just have to be persistent and provide quality information to convince a C, a managing director like uh, <laughs> Christine to actually spend quite a bit of money with, yeah. a, with a smaller company at the time. I mean, I didn't have a lot of projects under my belt, but we had some recommendations. Yeah. Been um, well worth it, Jason. Yeah. And if you look at the very bottom of like at, at the top bill, you'll see that um, where you were spending total amount due 134,000 um, at that month. But if you look at the same down below now, um, you'll see where it says total amount due and you look above it, you'll see net billing adjustment, direct net, direct program cost. Mm -hmm. And you come across, you see that you guys had a credit of, of $40,000 on that bill. Yeah. And, you know, obviously this is the April month, so you may have had some slowdown with COVID time. For sure, April. yeah. But you are, this bill is negative $8,000, right? And you had 40,000 come off because of net billing. So. You can see how this, how you know, you're 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 more energy resilient at this time, and I'm, I'm, you know, that must help the bottom line, and especially in times like this. Absolutely, every available resource can go now to supporting my staff. It's it's been a huge relief to not have these these huge bills and wondering where I'm going to get the resources to to satisfy the the the, the utility companies. Yeah, great. Um, well, I mean. Is there anything else that you wanted to touch on, Christine, at, uh, you know, in regards to what you know, Jamaica or the industry or the, you, any points you wanted to get across to people who may be watching? Um, well, I wanted to mention as well, um, when, we, when we were exploring the solar project um, for King Pepper, we got quotes from three different companies. I don't know if you remember this. And... Um, Two other companies came here, did their assessment, all of that. Um, Solar Buzz was not the least expensive quote, um, but every question that I asked Solar Buzz, every concern and every question, I was answered immediately. The other company said, uh, let me get back to you. I have to check that out. I have to ask my manager. But Solar Buzz, I felt their knowledge was so thorough um, that I felt comfortable borrowing that amount of money um, to, to improve the efficiency of my business. And it's a very big investment for a company my size. Um, but I, I know I made the right choice. And the support since has been as consistent as when you were trying to get my business in the first place. So. Yeah, great. And I mean, the 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 project. I mean, you should be coming up. I would say soon next year or so within to um, probably re recouping the investment, um, which is yeah. which is promising and great. And then all, it's all gravy from there. Um, yeah, it it is one thing. The casting your praises enough, Jason. All of my colleagues and friends, I I tell everybody, talk to Jason. It's going to be a game changer for your business. I have I really appreciate it because you have sent me quite a bit of referrals. I have to admit, I mean, I, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, still I, waiting on my commission, but hey. Well, 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 you got a great solar flashlight for Christmas. 
actually for the last four because how many folks sell five five tea on top five i i and let me tell you that wine went down real nice thank you okay, so much yeah. cool. don't worry. I'll, I'll step it up don't worry i'll step it up <laughs> christine seriously thank you for for taking the time i know um uh these types of uh interviews and, and meetings they, they will they benefit people and people like to hear how what you're doing, people know you. You you have a good presence in the in with the JMEA, and you're you know you're in the newspaper, and you have a success, successful business, and people know your father Dudley, and what uh, you guys have been able to do with King Pepper. I mean, it's uh, we love our Eaton's products. Uh, we and I, br I brought I brought some to to the UK, and we barbecue with it. But my mother-in-law and everyone loves it. So you guys, you know, you guys always do top quality stuff, and it's very impressive. Thank you. Is and they're she, available in Asda over there also if you run out. Asda? Yeah. Okay. Select Asda stores and online asda.com. Okay, great. Where uh, yeah. so if people watching this wherever if they just went to the king uh, to your website, could they find out where to buy their product your products locally? Locally in the UK or locally or in Jamaica? Anywhere. Like if they lived in the states or you know, do they Generally we just list our distributors. Uh, so if you're in a particular city or location, you would have to share that with me and I'd have to contact my distributor and find out what retailers there carry the products. Um, I thought about going online yourself and selling like virtual, uh, on, you know, this whole thing, everyone's like, we have to go take our businesses virtually now, et cetera. Is that something that this has showed you that maybe, Hey, we should have a, a shopping a online shopping marketplace. I'm, I'm actually in talks with somebody um, who's very versed in selling on Amazon um, in the U.S. So that would really focus on the U.S. Um, exporting online from Jamaica is a little bit of, um, it's a little bit tricky because each export entry, there's a cost of 30 something U.S. dollars. So if people just want two jars of jerk to then pay $30 for the export entry, yeah. Um, it's not cost effective. So we have a little bit of, of an issue here and I've been lobbying for change because I feel like the government would ultimately be a huge beneficiary of a little bit of a change in policy. Right. Um, if they were to reduce that export uh, entry fee, um, especially if it's maybe if it's geared to value of the item, if you're exporting a container of goods, paying 30 something dollars is nothing. But if somebody wants a couple jars of your product, um, they can't afford to pay for that export entry plus shipping plus the cost of the product. It just doesn't work out. Right, right. So um, we've been lobbying for some change uh, there and uh, hopefully we'll be successful at some point because it's affecting everybody. I mean, the coffee exporters, um, you know, people making little gazada and, and tamarind balls, they could have a, a decent export market. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a little bit prohibitive right now. But yes, I am in talks with somebody who who is an expert in selling on Amazon. Right. Um, so they're kind of going through all the data regarding our products and stuff, and we'll see yeah. if that can work out. That would be I a big uh, that's that's benefit. a great I, that's a great idea because I, when I used to live in Los Angeles, and it's, you know when you live in somewhere like LA, it's such a cult following of reggae music and Jamaica. Yes. Right? Every, you know, I would say 80% of the reggae concerts in America in the, in the, in the summer season, in the, in the concert time, are in California, the West Coast. Wow. And, I mean, people eat up anything um, Jamaican, especially, Jamaican, especially authentic seasoning and jerk like what you guys do. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a win, definitely. Right. We yeah. just have to have the products available for people to buy. That's yeah. that's the challenge. Yeah, there would have to be some way to like even store them up there, right? And then you guys. Yeah, I'm looking at at oh, warehousing and fulfillment centers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there's 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 definitely ways. So good luck with that. Thank you. All right, and thank you for taking the time. Hail up the thank family. you, Jason. Hail up yes. Family. Kisses to Quinn and say hi to Keisha yeah. and everybody. I will. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Christine, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.